Tommy Claps. I hope you guys are doing all right. Um, I know this is the first video that I will be posting for this class, so um, I miss you guys. It's so weird teaching to an empty classroom. Okay, there's nobody in here, and it's kind of weird. So I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, it's also weird not having uh, our class dynamic. You guys have such an interesting dynamic, uh, and I miss that. I miss you guys. Uh, I am praying for you. Y'all are staying safe during this time. Uh, we are going to start a new chapter of notes uh, with our astronomy class. Uh, maybe when you guys get back, we'll go back into the robotics some more and work with that some more. But for now, uh, just so we can stay on top of our notes, so we at least uh, attempt to finish them by the end of the school year, uh, in spite of everything that's going on, we are going to start a new chapter today. So, chapter 12. Uh, we're going to be learning about deep sky objects. So with this, we're going to be talking about nova uh, and uh, globular, cl uh, excuse me, globular clusters uh, and uh, galaxies and things like that with this chapter. So today, we are going to cover uh, two days worth of notes in this video. So if you want to uh, break it apart into two days and take the notes, that's fine. Uh, you do need to make sure that you keep up with your notes because uh, when you guys get back, I will be checking your notes for a quiz grade. So that's something that you need to uh, make sure that you are on top of. Uh, today is Maya's birthday, so uh, if you guys happen to have her phone number, make sure that you uh, text her a happy birthday or tell her happy birthday on Instagram or something. But happy birthday, Maya. I hope you have a good day. Anyway, here we go. We're going to uh, get started here with just a basic introduction, and then we're going to delve into uh, our first set of uh, topics. Okay? So, deep sky objects is a term that is used to refer to faint objects beyond our solar system that are not individual stars. All right? So, we spent a whole chapter discussing stars and constellations and their individuality. But now we're going to look at things that are not individual stars. Stars might help compose these things or make up these things, but it's not an individual star. Uh, these objects include star clusters, nebula, and galaxies. So we're going to look at star clusters today. Uh, the mm, Massier list. I looked up how to say this, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm butchering it. But you can find it on YouTube. Uh, if you want to hear somebody professional announce the, pronounce it, you guys know sometimes I struggle with pronunciations. Anyway, uh, the Massier list. This is a list that contains 110 of the brightest deep sky objects within the range of a small telescope. So if you have a telescope at home and you wanted to uh, take it outside at night and you could look this list up online and be able to find these items, in the night sky using your telescope. So star clusters, like I said, this is what we're going to focus on today. Star clusters, this is a group of stars that share a common origin and are gravitationally bound together for a length of time. So a star cluster has to have a similar origin point as far as maybe it was a supernova explosion that started it or something like that. Uh, but the main thing that forms a cluster has to do with gravity. Uh, what is the strength of the gravitational bond between the objects? All right, there are two types of star clusters. There are open clusters and globular clusters or globular clusters. Some people pronounce it that way. I've heard it both ways. So again, you can look it up and figure out how you want to say it. So we're going to look at open clusters first. An open cluster is a loose asymmetrical clump that contains anywhere between tens to two thousands of stars. All right, they are asymmetrical. That means that they don't have a regular uniform shape. They are what we consider irregular in shape. Um, and they contain anywhere between tens to thousands of stars. Uh, they are also known as galactic clusters because they tend to be found in galaxies. So galactic See, there you go. Um, yeah, we're going to move forward. Uh, they are found primarily. 
primarily in the disk of a galaxy, like I said with the last slide. Uh, they're found primarily in galaxies, so hence the other name galactic cluster. They're found primarily in the disk of the galaxy. So the disk, that tends to be the center area of the galaxy there. All right, so the Earth lies within the disk of our galaxy, allowing us to easily view open clusters of stars. If you were to get a telescope, you could go out and find these uh, clusters very easily. Since the core of an open cluster is not gravitationally strong, stars along the edges of them can be pushed out by the formation of new stars near the core. All right, if a new star is forming, it has the potential to push a star along the edge of an open cluster out into space and it is no longer part of that open cluster. This is because the gravity is weaker on the outer edges of the open cluster, so it's not, uh, the star isn't held onto as tightly. It's kind of like uh, when, you're, when you were little and your parents purged your toys, right? Uh, the ones that you had most recently gotten for Christmas, uh, those were the ones that you tended to hang on to. You wanted them more versus the ones that you had maybe had for a year or two. You were more willing to give them up. Same thing happens with a uh, open cluster star system. You have your globular clusters. These are tightly clumped spherical groups of thousands to millions of stars. So a globular cluster contains a significantly higher amount of stars than an open cluster system does. The density of these increases as you near the core. So you will find more stars more tightly packed together the closer you get to the core of an open, I'm sorry, of a globular cluster star clump. Uh, the amount of stars decreases as you move from the center of the cluster. So the further out you get, the more space you'll find between those stars. Uh, these are found, these referring to the globular cluster, uh, these are found orbiting around the center of a galaxy. No new star formation takes place in globular clusters due to the lack of dust and free gas there. The dust and the free gas that is found in a globular cluster, typically what happens is, think of stars like Cookie Monster, all right? Cookie Monster, if he sees a cookie, he's gonna gobble it up, he's gonna eat it, right? The same thing is true with stars in a globular cluster they are going to take in that free gas. They're going to take in that free dust and they're going to use them to feed themselves to make themselves stronger and larger. And that's where we are going to stop for today as far as your astronomy notes goes. Um, it's a little bit shorter because I was hoping to maybe be working on robotics with you guys at this point in time. But we're going to move forward with notes and hopefully when you guys get back, we will be more working more with the robotics once everything gets uh, back to normal. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day. I miss you. I'm praying for you.